This is Balance of Power on Bloomberg Television. Joe, what a fascinating conversation with the senator there. <laughs> yeah, the thing, people get animated about TikTok. I mean, whether you're talking to a teenager or a lawmaker in Washington, it really gives you a sense of how animated this hearing is probably going to be tomorrow. And the CEO will be there on Capitol Hill, yep. Shu Chu. Already he has given this outreach to users, wanting them to basically call their elected officials like Senator Bennett and That's say, right. please keep keep our, <laughs> our keep keep our social media but mm -hmm. he spent time with this individual and the quote was Not he sold. found it unconvincing at best he said which means he didn't believe a word of it scary times uh, ahead of tiktok ceo testimony at least for him to congress tomorrow senator shelley moore capito of west virginia joins us to discuss uh, senator you're going to be in the room what's your first question to the ceo well, I guess my first question would be, uh, what kind of data are you gathering and what kind of information are you gathering from all the TikTok uh, users here in this country and what are you doing with it? And see if he can, we can get any any truth from this. Uh, I, I, my expectations are very low, I think, like my fellow Senator, Senator Bennett was just explaining. <laughs> So, Senator, explain to us, why not just block the talk, as Marco Rubio says? He has his mm -hmm. own bill that would specifically right. deal with this specific company. I realize that the other legislation gives a much more broad approach, tools to the Treasury that might also uh, apply to other companies. But we're talking about TikTok. The CEO is in town. People are worried right. about privacy on this platform, the most popular app out there. Why not just ban it? Well, I think, uh, you know, I think we should look at that. Certainly the Restrict Act does have the, the one that I'm on has a much broader view. It looks at other yes. uh, implications, uh, whether it would be Huawei and other companies that could be having an effect on uh, mining data and, and violating privacy, grooming people for certain behaviors and all these kinds of things that we see going on in TikTok. Uh, I think mm -hmm. that... Uh, you know, to ban a what is what I understand the way young people in this country now are communicating through TikTok, uh, I, I think is a is a bigger question, and maybe that's where we end up. But for right now, I think we ought to have a risk based profile at how we're looking at these companies and what they're actually doing to us. And I think that will be the meat of a lot of the questions tomorrow. Senator, the legislation you're signing up behind, um, how is that going in terms of? getting the individuals you need on the House side to want to make sure that that's a piece of legislation, giving the Commerce Department a lot more of this weight to block some of these potential uh, foreign, whether or not it's technology or uh, other uh, insights into the U.S. marketplace. Do you think House lawmakers are also going to sign up for your act? Well, I think what we have to look at here, and the, the reality of the Senate, honestly, is that we have to have 10 people from either one party or the other join with the other party to get something through. So the, the sponsors in the, of this uh, bill, which were uh, Senator Thune and Senator Warner, very methodically uh, added a Republican and a Democrat at the same time. I'm one of the original co-sponsors of their, of their bill for this very reason, because that strengthens the bill. It also, uh, as I said, it has a much broader look. It also has a greater... Uh, a a greater chance of passing if you already have buy-in from both sides, obviously. And so when it goes to the House, uh, I think the determinations of the House will be, does it go far enough? And maybe the House would want to flat out ban TikTok. That, that, you know, then it has to come into a conference committee. Uh, certain Senator Rubio has a different view of this and a different way of looking mm -hmm. at it. Uh, what did you say? Ban the talk? So I think that... Uh, block the talk. Block the talk. <laughs> block the talk. I, sh I should have gotten it's all that about the It's all about the uh, alliterations and the rhyming on Capitol Hill, right. right, Senator? I have to ask you, though, I know this is beat on TikTok week. And it is its own unique story. But how concerned are you about foreign investors uh, potentially getting personal data or having access to the algorithm at Twitter? Is this not oh, a social media-wide issue? No, I'm very concerned about the, the Chinese getting any uh, further into whether it's farmland, whether it's an app, whether it's our uh, universities with our Confucius institutions, whether it's buying up our uh, energy assets here, or I was just in Mexico where they're buying energy assets there. All of this is extremely concerning because I think it has ramifications going forward. It, it strikes at our power. It strikes at our uh, our innovation. And uh, in, the, in the case of TikTok and other 
good things. It goes to our young people, which are the minds of tomorrow. They're going to be formulating uh, what direction they want this company and the preservation of our democracy even, you know, is, is that big. So uh, I think these are very concerning issues, and I think that we need to be, at this point, at least giving the Commerce Department the tools to be able to restrict based on risks, but also looking further and saying, if, if the, is the next punitive action actually blocking the talk? Maybe that is the direction that we go. I'm glad you brought up your congressional delegation to Mexico. I know you went with, met with President AMLO. How confident are you that they are going to crack down at the ports when it comes to these precursors of fentanyl coming into Mexico and then, of course, into the United States? Well, we know. We know that that fentanyl is coming through uh, the southern border and into our states, my state, for certainly. And so we talked with him, quite frankly, and said, the precursors are coming in from China. They're coming into your ports. Uh, he has taken much action uh, in terms of putting the military in charge of ports inspections to try to, uh, you know, get rid of the corruption. He, he talked about that a lot. But he also went a little bit further, I think, with us, in that he, he said that he would be uh, more forceful, more face-to-face -face and uh, with the Chinese to cut back on the precursors of this uh, deadly, deadly um, uh, uh, substance that's killing Americans and it's also feeding the cartels uh, and the corruption in Mexico. So I, I felt like it was a very definitive statement that he made. Uh, we talked a lot about cooperation. We talked about a lot of things we're concerned about with migration and other things. But I think, you know, we are partners here, uh, both of our countries. We need to enhance ourselves uh, as, as a unit because I think that's going to be stronger in terms of precursors to fentanyl, but also in terms of the migration going through the uh, our southern border, their northern border. Senator, there's a lot more we'd like to talk to you about. I hope you'll come back and see us again soon. Thank you for the I, insights I today. Like West to. Virginia Senator Shelley Moore Capito with us. All righty. Thanks a lot. Bloomberg. Coming up, President Trump's legal troubles in the spotlight, and he's talking again. A new statement just out. We'll have more on that conversation ahead with our political panel. This is Balance of Power on Bloomberg TV.